Hey, uh, it's been a hot minute, six months to be exact, and just a heads up, some of the footage I've got is like two pixels, and it's that way because I couldn't find my Harry Potter DVDs, and I don't want to give Supreme Turf of Turf Island any more money, so some of the footage is from YouTube from like 11 years ago, so everyone be nice to me or I'll cry thank you. <sighs> I know what you're thinking, it's 2021, are we really doing Harry Potter discourse in 2021? Do we not have better things to do than to throw out even more hot takes about a story written by someone whose current main antagonist is trying to stop the holocaust? You're completely right, but what can I say? I found the nuances around this interesting. So some drama went down on Twitter recently and I'm going to give you a brief summary. I'm not going to include anyone's name or account handle because I know it led to someone being dogpiled and upfront, I think most of the time Twitter pylons are incredibly unhelpful and honestly quite a shitty thing to do to someone, so I don't want to contribute to that further. Being vague, someone on Twitter criticised the character Hermione Granger from the Harry Potter franchise. What led to the controversy was elaborating on the point they made, that Hermione tends to lean heavily into white feminism, by saying Hermione would have been able to get so much done if she hadn't been such an irritating know-it-all and actually had some friends. A lot of autistic people found this tweet upsetting, kind of equivalent to a microaggression because lots of autistic people know what it's like to be outcast by a group for their autistic traits, which for many autistic people includes something called info dumping, which is when an autistic person shares a lot of information about their special interest all in one go, sometimes to a point of unknowingly overwhelming someone. To people in the autistic community, Hermione is coded as autistic. Although it isn't stated in the books, and Jolene Curling Rowling may not have intended to have written her that way, that is how she has been interpreted. So to begin, how is Hermione coded autistic? By the way, I'm talking explicitly about the books here, not the films. The more I thought about it, the more I recognise a lot of autistic traits in Hermione. Hyperfixations and in special interests, inflexibility of thoughts when it comes to established rules, taking things extremely literally, a lack of awareness of social cues and expectations that gets her into a lot of trouble, and especially when she's young, makes her the target of a lot of mean jokes and frequently being excluded by her peers. Some have said these things are just Hermione being a kid that she grows out of in later books, but personally I don't think that's true. First of all, a lot of autistic people experience looking a lot more autistic when they were younger just to appear to grow out of it, when really it's just that they've gotten better at masking. And second of all, Hermione never loses any of those traits. Even in the last book, Hermione is so hyperfixated on the task that Dumbledore gave her, she doesn't have the awareness to realise it might not be appropriate to keep drawing Harry's attention back to it when he's trying to visit the grave of his parents for the first time, which pisses him off, understandably. There are some autistic people who responded to the initial criticism by saying that because it didn't bother them, personally, other autistic people just needed to let it go and move on, and focus on other autistic characters actually written by autistic writers. I understand what's being said here, but I think, one, it never helps the marginalised community to imply that just because some people within it haven't had a specific negative experience, it means the people who have are overreacting and their feelings don't matter. Like, it's great that this didn't affect you, but it clearly did affect a lot of people, and they are worth listening to and hearing out so we can better understand how to improve the ways we communicate. And also, too, we really don't have that many prominent actually autistic characters by actually autistic writers, so I'm not going to tell people in the community that it's not okay for them to latch onto characters they headcanon that way. Especially since 1, or 2a, I guess? That would be deeply hypocritical of me, and 2b, or not to be, that is the pencil. Just because these characters may not have been intentionally written to be autistic doesn't mean they're not autistic. Because of how under-researched and ignored autism is, chances are these writers are actually writing autistic characters with prominent autistic traits, but they've just not been aware of autism enough to see it. Just as there are people who can go their whole life and suddenly realise once they've researched it that they're autistic, there doubtlessly are writers who have written autistic characters without realising just to see once they've actually read into autism that they are autistic. This has literally just happened with the characters and everything is going to be okay. Leading from this, another take I've seen disagreeing that Hermione could be an autistic character is people saying she is a JK Rowling self-insert so she can't be autistic. Surely if JK Rowling had intended for her to be written as autistic she would have been very different, because we already know JK Rowling has a rather infantilising view of autistic women because of how she frames them in her open letter defending her rampant transphobia. 
I understand this take, especially since another character I've always read to be clearly coded as autistic, Grawp, is infantilized and treated horrifically by most of the other characters. There's a lot of ableism within Rowling's writing, as well as everything else that's kind of shitty, so I see why people would think if she wanted to write a specifically autistic character, it would be noticeable. And as JK Rowling has never mentioned herself is autistic, but has said Hermione is basically a self-insert, that means Hermione can't be autistic. But even with this, I don't think that means Hermione isn't autistic, self-insert character or not. Something to consider is, maybe she is a self-insert character, and maybe JK Rowling is autistic too. There's a good chance if JK Rowling is autistic, she wouldn't know because of how frequently autistic women are dismissed and misdiagnosed. None of this excuses Rowling's bigotry by the way. She can still be espousing really insidious transphobia that is legitimately impacting the lives and safety of trans people in the UK. One doesn't balance the other out. By the way, I don't usually like the practice of speculating whether someone is autistic or not in response to someone engaging in harmful behaviour. I'm only doing it in this instance because it correlates directly to the dismissal of Hermione being both a self-insert character and an autistic one too. If Hermione is a projection of a lot of things JK Rowling has experienced, then a lot of it also matches up with the experience of growing up a young undiagnosed autistic person, particularly if you've been assigned female at birth. Which is why so many of the autistic community have a deep empathy for the character of Hermione Granger. So let's say Hermione is autistic, let's take this as the baseline. How would calling her an irritating know-it-all be derogatory, specifically to autistic people? A lot of people think autism is an invisible disability, but actually that's not true. Once you learn what autism and other neurodiversities look like, the traits of these conditions become much easier to spot. Now, needless to say, marginalised groups are not a monolith. There will be outliers, and as the common saying in the autistic community goes, if you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. But there are some common traits considered a pretty good indicator someone could be autistic. One of them is the tendency to info dump, and to build on this, it's a common experience with autistic people to info dump about things they really care about, and then be shunned or shamed for not understanding you've committed a social faux pas by not recognising you were info dumping at the wrong time or to the wrong person. So for me, the potentially unkind thing being said in the original criticism isn't so much to call her a know-it-all, but to imply it is this specific trait that makes her unworthy of friendship and acceptance when it is a trait a lot of autistic people have too. Particularly in framing it through how it interrupts her productivity, as this is also something a lot of autistic people struggle with. But here is something else that we need to think about. Know-it-all, on its own, isn't derogatory, and is certainly not a microaggression. It's a very neutral way to describe someone, and although it is frequently used as an insult, I think it can be seen as a positive trait too. In fact, both these things coexist in Hermione as a character. Within the story, Hermione's ability to retain information and her passion for learning about her special interests save Ron and Harry multiple times. But I would argue it is this specific trait that also makes her white feminism more insidious. I'm going to include a couple of articles in the description if you don't know what white feminism is. Hermione, because of her lack of impulse control, because of her inability to mask when she's convinced she knows something compared to the beings around her, means sometimes she can't help but centre her own knowledge and perception as essentially a white saviour, even when it's speaking over other beings it directly affects, i.e. the house elves. As a side note, if we're saying Hermione could be autistic and be a self-insert character from JK who potentially could also be autistic, the same absolutely goes for Hermione's white feminism. Hermione was once actually described by JK Rowling as a character that amplified all of Rowling's traits and also Rowling's feminism, which I think we've seen displayed several times absolutely falls under white feminism, particularly seeing how JK seems to uphold neoliberalism in the Harry Potter series and Hermione becomes an established magic cop and then the magical prime minister. Hermione absolutely girl bosses her way to the top, and it is Hermione's adherence to the established rules that she cannot tolerate being questioned and, yes, being a know-it-all for the establishment that leads to this. Also, it's worth taking into account that regardless of Hermione's neurochemistry, she was written to be a difficult character. She had such this huge intelligence, but it was really a kind of exasperating, frustrating character in a way, though, that it was like the girl that bothered you in school, yeah, <laughs> but you totally. couldn't stop She's thinking about her. So, um, Not always the easiest to like. Very no, but, I, but I, I liked that about her. That's um, what I liked about her. Yeah, They're, I know, but that you can see how that allayed a lot of fears, because she wasn't the most obvious 
character, perhaps, for a person to like, or say was their favourite character. She is supposed to be irritating, and I think some autistic people might take that personally, but as an autistic person, with autistic parents, and two autistic siblings, all with differing stims and special interests and support needs, I can tell you up front that it is perfectly possible to find an autistic person and their traits both wonderful and deeply, deeply irritating depending on the day or the mood. So know-it-all on its own isn't a microaggression, but I think the way it's contextualised is what potentially could make it be read that way, as is what happened in the original criticism. So I think communication online can be unnuanced, and Tories and wankers were stating the obvious, but allow me to elaborate in relation to this point. Online discourse about characters can sometimes reach points where we decontextualise every choice they make and reduce them down to just one specific action, and we let that action sum up the entirety of that person, if they're good or bad. We don't allow for grey areas. Hermione can be autistic and be a white feminist and deserve criticism for that. Hermione can deserve criticism for her white feminism but still not be ostracised and belittled, even when she's being annoying, because of how this specific trait can show in other people and often lead to them being shamed and isolated too. Hermione is at her greatest when she's working with other people, which I think is what the original criticism is about. But in the book, she doesn't have to lose that trait to be accepted, she's still allowed to be herself. And note, she frequently gets called out by Ron and Harry and even Hagrid and Ginny and Luna when certain autistic traits start being unintentionally harmful to other people. But the book itself even clarifies that it's very different to be made fun of and criticised by people who love you, versus someone who calls her an insufferable know-it-all just to be cruel and hurt her. I know it's easy to say, Elle, why are you going through all this for a fictional character? Don't you think you're taking this too personally? To which I say, you're right, Hermione is fictional, but if you engage in critical thinking, you know nothing is created in a vacuum, and neither are people's responses to things. Everything is reinforced by the society we live in, and Hermione may be fictional, but people's negative responses to specific character traits that also see people in real life ostracised for these traits too, should be looked at as critically as someone pointing out how these traits can harm people. Both can be worthy of constructive criticism, especially since in real life autistic people often aren't allowed to build a steady stream of support around them that reinforce their deservedness for unconditional love and belonging. In real life, people don't view other people's actions generously. We assume the worst, we jump to judgments and assume someone isn't a good person if they make a mistake, and at the moment the move tends to be to seize contact and engage in shunning and isolating. There's a reason autistic people are statistically much more likely to experience loneliness, which can drastically shorten a person's life, and why autistic people are much more likely to take their own life at a far higher rate than neurotypical people. We can't ignore the correlation between autistic loneliness and its effects with how often autistic people can be left out of socialising because of the assumption, particularly in undiagnosed people, that they're just broken or undeserving of friendship because they may have made a social mistake that they've perhaps not understood. It causes real harm. I just want to re-emphasise, I don't think the person who made the original criticism was intending this. I'm sure they would never want to intentionally harm the autistic community in any way, and again, I believe their original point that Hermione being a know-it-all can sometimes play directly into her white feminist leanings is actually a really fair observation. I also think people who engage in dogpiling this person and not taking a step back when seeing how many people were jumping in with their take, not acknowledging how this person's experience of racism or their own neurodiversity can affect how they are able to process criticism did absolutely nothing to help the situation at all and are as worthy of criticism for their response as the original criticism itself. Criticizing criticism on the criti blah, 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 blah. I need a better hobby. But if we act like criticism of a character for certain traits doesn't represent how people in real life with the same traits are also treated, then we turn away from people who are still incredibly unrepresented, face a lot of stigma and untrue stereotypes, and are mistreated by wider society because of these things. Descriptors and critique can go beyond criticism and may reflect internal biases depending on context. There are lots of descriptors for people that, without context, aren't necessarily negative. But for example, off the top of my head, whenever a woman character gets called shrill or emotional, if you were to describe her as being barely tolerable for this reason, I think it would at least suggest some internalised misogyny and would invite further consideration of how we critique the character. He's been poisoned, you daft dimbo! But call them shrill and emotional neutrally, that doesn't necessarily make it derogatory. Although admittedly I don't think I hear the word shrill used neutrally, but anywho. Context matters. 
We can't forget we live in a culture that absolutely paints certain behaviours as good and bad. This is really hard for neurodivergent people because a lot of the traits that are considered to make someone a bad person can frequently be a trait of neurodivergence. Our tendency to try and make both fictional and real people fall directly under good or bad dichotomies is really damaging for everyone, but neurodivergent people in particular suffer for this. The biggest thing about this, to me, is not that it's not okay to point out how someone's actions can hurt people, but to not shame someone for those actions, which I think could be what the original criticism overlapped with. Autistic people carry a lot of shame, the deeply held belief that we are bad or faulty and undeserving of love and acceptance, and sometimes I think there's still a lot of confusion over how to critique someone for something they do that doesn't fall into shaming, especially online. And I think it's even harder to critique neurodivergent people because often being neurodivergent means your emotions will be heightened anyway, plus the trauma of having lived in an environment where you're face being excluded and shunned means it's even harder to listen to criticism if you're engaging in a behaviour that harms other people. In the original criticism, I genuinely think if they had just said Hermione's know-it-all tendencies really emphasise aspect of her white feminist beliefs, it wouldn't have created the controversy it did. One, it didn't deserve either way by the way. Now, the more I've reflected on this whole thing, the more I've wondered, as can often happen online, if this whole thing isn't a big misunderstanding and the emphasis was intended to be on Hermione being a know-it-all white feminist, which is what led her to not having any friends, versus it was being a know-it-all that made her not have any friends. Especially since, demonstrably, Hermione does have friends throughout both the books and the films. There's a very good chance the original criticism was just being hyperbolic. Hyperbolic? Oh no. Hyperbolic, hyperbolic, you know what I mean. That can often happen on Twitter. This would make a lot more sense, and honestly, poor wording and uncharitable interpretation does lead to a lot of needless conflict on the internet, especially when it comes to pylons and defensiveness. And I think this leads pretty nicely into some stuff I think we need to think about when it comes to the online autistic community and how and why it can be defensive. The autistic community, like most other marginalised communities, has a massive problem with acknowledging racism and other kinds of oppression within it. Autistic people of colour have had to step away from the autistic community due to regularly feeling like, if they talk about their experiences of racism within the community, they are frequently told that they are distracting from the wider issues autistic people face and are needlessly sowing division and conflict in the community. We are assuming the white autistic story is every autistic person's story, and that's not true. A black autistic person talking about their experiences of racism is also talking about their experiences of ableism as an autistic person. They cannot be separated. Implying it can be, and that we should only focus on the plight of a few specific people, is a continuation of racist hierarchical thinking we see play out in neurotypical communities too. I bring this up because I don't think it would be right to make this video without pointing out that the controversy, while giving an interesting insight into the subtle ways ableism can be expressed, also became completely removed of the original criticism, which was of white feminism and the ways white people centre themselves when talking about oppression. I think Hermione is considered a bit of a comfort character for a lot of autistic people. They see her loved and appreciated and valued in her community in many ways for her autistic traits, not in spite of them, which I understand brings hope to a lot of people, especially in a community that has such rare representation to cling to. However, it's interesting how this valid criticism of her got twisted away from the original point, white feminism, and became about ableism. Maybe this is a stretch, but it felt like a continuation of other ways white autistics lash out when asked to confront their privilege. Although I think the original criticism was perhaps a bit clumsily worded and did contain some anti-autistic ableism, I don't just think it was the comments that leaned towards shaming that triggered people, and I mean triggered in the psychological sense, not the shitty internet edgelord sense. Seeing Hermione called out on the way she processes this particular autistic trait, being a know-it-all, and the potential harm it can do to others when it is crossed with superiority and privilege made a lot of people very defensive. Which brings up another thing I think needs to be discussed more, the ways neurodiversity can impact internal biases, perception and communication. Neurodiversity is all about brain chemistry, and how that chemistry impacts each individual in their processing of internal and external stimuli. The more scientific words for this are proprioception, interception, extraception, nociception, and inception. No wait, forget the last one. Well, maybe one day. But for now, the first four mean different ways the body and brain process everything. Depending on the autistic person you speak to, they will feel these things in lots of different ways. Some will be hypersensitive to certain things, some will be hyposensitive. 
And the same goes for how autistic people process their own emotions too, which by the way, for autistic people, can sometimes be physically painful. Certain sounds, kinds of light, emotional feelings can actually bring about real physical pain. It's really hard sometimes. Some of the ways this can manifest is in having a strong reaction to things that may not appear like they need a strong reaction. Kind of similar to how people with PTSD become psychologically triggered by seemingly small things. Except with autistic people, it doesn't necessarily have to come from a place of trauma, although statistically it's likely it will be both, as it's very rare to meet an autistic person who isn't traumatised, but anyway. Autistic people can experience a lot of different conditions related to their brain's capacity to process emotions that can make them deeply reactionary. There's a condition called rejection sensitivity dysphoria, which is defined as extreme emotional sensitivity and pain triggered by the perception that a person has been rejected or criticised by important people in their life. There's lots of other things, oppositional defiance disorder, eating disorders, hyper and hypoempathy, anxiety and depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, dyspraxia, dyscalculia and dyslexia, motor difficulties, and other disabilities. I like to think of it like a music amp. For neurotypicals, most of their dials are typically at zero, although occasionally, depending on their lived experiences, maybe you'll get a dial a bit off from zero. But if you're neurodiverse, those dials are going to be all over the fucking place, and for each neurodivergent person, it's going to be different. And all those things happening can mean if you're trying to have a meaningful conversation about privilege, systemic oppression, white supremacy, basically anything that might conflict with that person's specific lived experience, there's a good chance a neurodiverse person isn't going to process it very well in the moment. Now, let me make this clear. Being neurodiverse absolutely does not mean you are therefore inherently bigoted. I do not think neurodivergent people are more racist than neurotypicals, or more bigoted or anything else. I do not think being neurodiverse causes racism or bigotry. I do think being autistic can impact how a person is able to perceive their own privilege, and therefore has the potential to blink at an autistic person to the ways they could be engaging in behaviour that unintentionally causes harm to other people. I want to emphasise what causes harm isn't autism. There are many autistic people for whom this isn't an issue. It's privilege that's the issue. And you can see that clearly in how privileged white autistics treat autistics of colour and autistics facing other kinds of oppression. In case it sounds like I'm saying this, I'm not saying autism is a privilege, it isn't, though it's not the burden it's made out to be either. All autistic people struggle in one way or another. I'm talking specifically about other kinds of privilege, particularly white privilege. This doesn't mean you don't have difficult conversations with neurodivergent people who are privileged, or that they can't be reached. It means they might have to be reached differently, because what can read as someone actively being ignorant and reactionary can actually have much more going on beyond the surface. But to be able to do that, we need to foster a community that cares about dismantling these issues in a way that doesn't encourage mass shaming and shunning, because it's about recognising as individuals you can't live in this world and not internalise bigoted beliefs in some way. That doesn't mean you don't say anything when you encounter them, it means recognising if we want to come together as a community and make things better by changing the system, turning on people for getting things wrong isn't going to help, and there's a good chance you might need to try lots of different approaches with certain neurodivergent people to get them to understand why their beliefs might be perpetuating harm, particularly if the reasons neurodivergent people are clinging to them so passionately is because of how their neurodivergence is being processed. I say all this as someone who has seen people regularly use their own neurodivergence to sidestep their own, Ugh, problematic behaviour. I wish I could think of another way of expressing that, but hey. Something I think a lot of autistic people can struggle with, depending on how they process their own empathy, is that their experience is not universal. Right, you know what I actually think I need to stress this here too. No one is worse for this than neurotypicals. Autistics might find it hard to process self-awareness and how others experience the world, but often with neurotypicals it's just because they can't handle someone acting differently to what they're told is the normal way to act. Much to think about Famex. Trying to punish someone for not conceding to your experience at the expense of their own is such a recipe for unhelpful communication, and it is absolutely one that is fostered on Twitter, unfortunately particularly within more marginalised groups there. One of the things that really bothered me about seeing the person who originally tweeted the criticism get dogpiled was how frustrating it was to watch people spend energy on long threads, which I do get the appeal of, let be who is without bird apps and cast the first tweet and all, but to not recognise the amount of people who were going in on them, they were never going to be able to process the legitimate criticism outside of the people massively overstating harm. The dialogue around overstating harm in marginalised communities is something I think is going to become much more common going forward in online spaces. I think I think we're in a really difficult situation if your mental well-being is hinged on whether or not a stranger on the internet concedes your belief that they wrote something ableist about your favourite fictional character. I'm not saying this to diminish the pain of that happening, which I know is real for some, 
I'm saying other people will have their own reasons for not wishing to do that which are just as valid as your pain and both these things can coexist and it doesn't make anyone a bad person. Dare quickly to emphasise here, I'm not talking about trying to hold a state or government accountable, I'm talking about the ways we communicate online with other disempowered people, not people who are literally denying groups their rights or, you know doing a genocide. Getting angry at individuals on the internet over their vaguely ableist criticisms of your favourite autistic comfort character is not going to actively change the environment those ableist beliefs were fostered in. And although I totally understand the appeal of trying to reach people in this way, if you don't know them, chances are it's rare they'll be receptive to you, and that energy will be much better spent doing other things. Okay, all this is noted. So, how do you solve a problem like Hermie 1? And other stuff. The quickest answer is, you can't, lol. We have to sit with the discomfort that someone is capable of doing both good and bad things, and sometimes that can be influenced by neurodiversity, though never excused by it. Hermione was a great, complicated character, and if your headcanon is that she is autistic, then she is both a wonderful character and an extremely grating one sometimes for the same traits. All these things can coexist, as long as we don't reinforce the idea that character traits that are typically tells for autism flat affect, info dumping, disliking physical touch, difficulty matching your energy, rigid about certain rules or rituals, no filter, engaging in unusual public stims, etc leaves people undeserving of friendship and acceptance, as autistic people are often isolated and stigmatised. I think Hermione is a great example of how autism can impact how a person is able to perceive their privilege, and how autistic people are both unfairly victimised by wider society for their traits, for example being a know-it-all, but also makes acknowledging how those traits can impact other people even harder sometimes, especially because we mask because we are often trying our best not to upset others and sometimes it's still not enough, which is painful, though still doesn't mean we're allowed to ignore or harming other people even if it's unintentional. People's reaction to the controversy showed me how little people understand the specific kinds of oppression and prejudice autistic people face, whilst also deeply emphasising the areas privileged autistic people themselves show no awareness or understanding of. The neurodiversity movement is one that is still fairly unacknowledged within wider online spaces, which is honestly pretty wild to me considering, especially within more leftist circles, the attempts to prevent harm and resolve conflict in ways that hurt the least amount of oppressed people means understanding human behaviour, how it is acted and how how it is interpreted. It's crucial. Especially if you want to then understand how the structures we currently live in impact these people and their ability to safely build greater self-awareness. And you can't talk about those things without talking about other things like neurodiversity and mental health. Part of the neurodiversity movement gaining wider recognition is seeing ourselves represented more accurately, as opposed to showing blatant traits of someone neurodiverse, but then when questioned on it, characters' writers reduce them to just being weird, strange or quirky, and I do think part of this is acknowledging how many popular characters there are that genuinely do have autistic traits. Just because writers at the time were ignorant of autism doesn't mean they weren't comprehending it in the people around them the whole time, they just didn't have the language to appropriately address what they were seeing. I believe Hermione is autistic, whether this is a reflection of her creator or not, and I also think the way she processes her autism, the compulsion to info dump on others with a lack of awareness of when this is inappropriate, her inflexibility when it comes to established rules, the belief that because she has read a lot on her special interests it inherently means she knows more about them than, say, the beings they directly impact, plus her rejection sensitivity and inability to consider she may have gotten something wrong, shows how her neurodiversity makes it harder for her to understand how her privilege impacts other people, and also seeing the flaws within the magical establishments she ultimately ends up working for and becoming a boss in. This directly impacts the white feminism she upholds throughout the series, as written by JK Rowling, who I think is a good example of a white feminist herself. And everyone will have their reasons for agreeing or disagreeing with certain hot takes on Bird App, and yes, those reasons are worth examining. It could be, for example, internalised ableism, or being unwilling to look at how your white privilege might contribute to people from the same community as you feeling unwelcome in online spaces because any attempt at criticism is taken as a way to create conflict within the community. This is all worth being curious about when considering the perspectives of other people. 
Nuance online, particularly on Twitter, doesn't often happen. As an app, it reinforces the worst kinds of communication and facilitates outrage instead of empathy and actual productive conversations around things like ableism and racism and how they intersect. As the autistic community is given a greater platform in the social consciousness, it is integral we start to face the biases that are allowed to go unchallenged within it. If we want to move forward as a community, we have to also account for how racism plays a part in it too. There isn't one without the other. Racism and ableism are inherently linked. And instead of casting people out, although obviously people are more than welcome to leave willingly if it's not the community for them, we should do better to work with people struggling to change their mode of thinking and reassure them that they won't be ostracised if they don't get something right away. The energy that gets put into mass tweeting and attempting to publicly shame someone would be much better spent working towards causes in your local community. Or, you know, making a half an hour video on Twitter drama and Harry Potter, I guess. Ugh. Anyway, people online who express things you find harmful, even if they objectively are, chances are if you don't know them in any way, they have no reason to want to listen to you. Sometimes, attempting to force someone into seeing your point of view can make them double down on their questionable one because they feel attacked. I'm not saying that's right by the way, it's just human behaviour, which can be influenced by so many things, neurodiversity absolutely being one of them. The last thing I can think to end this on is, like, just try not to dogpile people you think have a bad take. To use an excellent quote by Bo Burnham, And a bunch of coloured pencil drawings of all the different characters in Harry Potter each other. Ugh, no, no, not that one, uh, this one. Is it necessary that every single person on this planet um, expresses every single opinion that they have on every single thing that occurs all at the same time? Is that, is that necessary? I don't know if this whole controversy has come around from a misinterpretation of wording, but I will say viewing it through that lens has made it a way more nuanced and complex conversation. Either way, the person who put out that original criticism did not deserve the treatment they received, and we can all do better to work on our communication skills and internal biases. And I'm gonna end it by saying for fuck's sake we need more good fucking autistic representation, Harry Potter has literally been out for over 20 years, I can't believe that in all that time good autistic representation is so low that we've not been able to do anything but cling to this sh Twitter discourse is the worst Will the fighting never end? Bird app distracts you from what matters. And most importantly,